Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. It's good to be here. As opposed to being in... Where's, where else would you rather be? Well, who wouldn't want to be in the palatial downtown studios? Exactly. Here at uh, Bridge Builder Studios in beautiful downtown Yukon. The Oklahoma. palatial. The palatial Bridge Builder well, if, Studio. Listen, if we're going to do it, let's do it right, right? If we're going to uh, actually... PBBS. Palatial PBB. Bridge Builder Studios. The All PBBS. Right. All right, the palatial bridge builder studio. It is. It is another wonderful Wednesday morning here. We are in the middle of what, in a normal year, would be summer vacation. In a normal year. In a normal year. In a normal. But <laughs> what the heck? Hey, Brad. Good but, morning in Florida, friend. But, but thanks for popping on. I gotta scoot over, and you gotta scoot over a little bit, cause. He loves me so much. I'm like a, it's my magnetic personality, oh. and he just keeps scooting over and over and over. And by the time the show's over, he's practically sitting in my lap. <laughs> well, okay, I just want to say that one arm of my chair is outside well, the of the table. But the table is not the defining point, babe. It's the distance between the the arms um, of our chair that is the um, defining point. <laughs> okay. yep. She's pushing me away, people. You saw it on, on the, the Facebook, Facebook live. live. She wants me to go away over here. I don't even know if I'm even in the camera angle. Um, over I, here. You know, hey, it's you know, it's just my, I, what can I say? I have a magnetic personality. You do, and and you have a tendency to lean towards me. Oh, I which just, is not a bad. I, I mean, just want to make sure I'm in the camera angle. And it's I, a wide angle lens, and I want it has to be a wide angle lens, babe. And I want to snoop. There's on, a lot of me to get in there, and I want to snoop on the Facebook feed. So, so we always, I, I always <laughs> maybe we this. should train sides. I don't want you to get out of balance because you're constantly <laughs> leaning I'm, to the left. I, my chair might tip over and I'd fall <laughs> to the side, and that would be really embarrassing. <laughs> well, you know what? Hey, uh, Steve, Brett says blame COVID nineteen. It's, and, it's, and, the, it's the reason for everything well, and, negative that happens. And, and it, it, it's, it's a thing. It's a real thing. It's not, n not a thing. And it's one of the ways that this year has gotten so out of whack. I mean, it was the reason for the shutdown. It's the reason that instead of being the middle of summer vacation, it's like month four of summer vacation for mm -hmm. the kids because they've been home the whole time. And, and... One of the things we wanted to talk about today was um, that 2020 can be what you make of it. Uh, you, can, you can take the label that this is the suckiest year ever, and you can wrap, your, wrap it around yourself like a, a blanket, and if you decide that 2020 is the suckiest year ever... I, I like your chances. I like your chances of it being the suckiest year ever. Uh, you know, I believe it was Henry Ford who said, whether you can or, or whether, whether you, you can can't, can't, you'll have whatever you say. Well, that's not exactly the quote. It's, qu it's close. Whether you can or whether you can't. Either way, you're right. If you're right, whether you yeah. say you can or you say you can't, either way, you're right. Right. I think that's how it goes. Maybe somebody will fact check us. Some somebody fact somebody check us. Somebody fact check us. We're busy doing a show. We can't look up every quote to make sure it's super accurate. But you guys are hanging out. You can. But, but if they. But my my point is this: is 2020 has been a year of of dramatic events. Uh, it has been a year of destroyed routines, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be a year of complete and utter garbage. I made a Facebook. I I found found a T-shirt making fun of 2020. What did it say? I'm afraid to. Ask. Is is it something you can say it, it's in some, in public? I think. It's something I can say in public. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes they put stuff out that it's like, nah, maybe we can't say that in public. It, it says, 2020, very bad, would not recommend. 
and gave it a one star review. Okay. Okay, that's what the Facebook, it was just a t-shirt that said 2020, very bad, wouldn't recommend it. Sort of in the, in the, in the tone of the 45th president of the United States. Oh, so you I, have I to say it so it sounds like Donald Trump. You don't have to. President but, Donald but, J. But, Trump. But that would be implied. Ah, for, okay. For those those of you that, that the name triggers, I just will call him the 45th president. Oh, I'm sorry. I just triggered everybody that the name Donald J. Trump triggers. And so what is his? His what? name is Donald J. Trump. Uh, I should have brought my Donald J. Trump. Maybe when we go to commercial oh. break, I'll bring my cup. But we don't want to turn this. Okay, Sunday, it's funny. Sunday night. Sunday mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. There's a politics show on Crossover Radio. I know. Robert's Rules of Conversation. Right. You can get all your 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 Trumpness there. But so I I posted this shirt. Right. And basically bashed 2020. You did. As being horrible and awful and not very good and the worst year ever. That's what he said. And your response was what? How can you say that? 2020's been amazing. We're busy over here living the dream. And everybody and, and he's bashing 2020, and it's been one of the best years of our life. Okay. People out there in in Radio Land. Facebook Land. Facebook Land. La La Land. Okay. You can probably... Crazy Land. Or you can just keep interrupting me the whole show. <laughs> And we won't, Sorry, babe, we, won't get, we won't get anything done. I mean, it's just either way you want to play it. I'm I flexible. I can roll with it. I apologize. I can roll my chair further over here so I don't lean That's on you. That's the ticket, right? I don't know if they can still see me, but I hope so. <laughs> so, people out there, you may or may notice a couple of significant differences. Let me... Uh, let me uh, ask you to, to see if you can recognize them and throw your comments in the comment screens. What's different from last time we did a show? There's two significant things that I can think of. That are different? Three, if you want to include a minor one. But here's my point, is that 2020 has been full of these dramatic uh, paradigm-shifting events. But it's also, in our lives, been filled with good things. It has. It's been filled to the brim overflowing with good things. And it's not that we aren't upset by the bad things that have happened in the, in the, the greater world, because we are. Mm-hmm. But you, you have a lot of power over how you view your life by how you look at it and what you say about it. Absolutely. Here's the thing. Perspective is everything. Well, it's not everything. But perspective is very powerful in how you live your life. What you believe, what you, and here's where we're going to go with this today, what you say really, really, really does matter. David, DLC is, is super, 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 um, super observant. What did he say? He said, flowers and a green thing and Plant. your beard is coming back in. <laughs> See? He, Way to go, DLC. DLC. You're on top of it, brother. He got, he got the two big things. The third thing, which is much subtler, is this shirt has never been worn before on the show. Are you sure? Pretty sure. The quick, quick story about this shirt. Um, we have six grandkids, all of whom are awesome. Our very first grandchild mm-hmm. was born almost ten years ago. He was. And He's nine and a half. And I wore a shirt very similar to this, mm-hmm. an orange polo, to the hospital where he was born. Mm-hmm. And while we were waiting for him to be born, his other grandpa says to me, why would you wear Texas colors to the birth of our first grandson? (laughs) 
And it's like, dude, it's <clears throat> orange. It's an orange shirt. There is no UT logo on the sleeve. There's no, you know, go horns on the back of it. It's just orange. It is, it is not Texas. It is not OSU. It's just orange. <laughs> but We come from a very... Both our both our side, my side of the family, and my daughter in law's side of the family are very much Sooner school. You Boomer Sooner, and, uh, and we. And she so, has a cousin that pitches for the Sooners baseball team uh -huh, currently. Uh -huh. And so, um, so yeah, so we're we're you know when yeah. when Stephen and I got married, I was working for the University of Oklahoma. Yep, we had checks every month that said university of oklahoma on it so yeah. we were in favor of it because they were giving us money right so that has nothing to do with anything about today right but i was just saying that <laughs> that was the third thing that the one thing that dlc missed yes just orange dlc it's not a, it's not a partisan shirt it's just a color right but you know hey it depends on your perspective Right. If I were to wear a purple shirt, then it would be Minnesota Vikings, regardless of whether there was a logo or not. Oh, so it's perspective. It, yeah. Which takes us back to today's topic. How you see the world, what your perspective on in life is kind of the how you frame your world and how your world rolls. And because, you know, one of our big mantras that we live by all the time is whatever you focus on grows. And... Um, and so if you focus on the good stuff, then you're going to see the good stuff. If you focus on the bad stuff, you're going to, that's eventually what, what your focus begins to, to blur out everything that doesn't line up with exactly the way you're looking at things. And yeah. so if you're looking at things in a negative way, you're going to see negative things. If, if I had a dollar for every time somebody, including myself, Posted how horrible 2020 was on Facebook. I'd be rich. I'd have a lot of dollars, and I'd go on vacation again. I would go. I I would be able to afford a third vacation or this a summer. fourth one. So here's my my thing: is yes, there's been ridiculous, unimaginable, horrible things like. Pol police killing a guy on on a street. Not just any guy. He was a black guy. And it was, you know, that's gross and awful. But it's not the only thing in 2020. Right. You know, and even in down cycles, there are, are good things to latch on to. And... A lot of times, the good stuff just floats on right by us. We don't even give it notice. We don't even uh, celebrate it. Right. And that takes us back to that whole comment uh, that sort of sparked the idea for this show was Steve saying that, you know, everybody wanted to just dial back 2020 and give it a pass and move on to 2021. And and when we... And, and there's, that's just a valid point. I mean, like, there have been some bad things. People have had bad things happen. But my guess is that no matter how bad things have been, there have been some good things along the way. So about a year ago, I guess, um, I well, let me back that up with give, making a kind of a can't climb up on my little soapbox for a second. That's why we leave the soapboxes in this room so you can <laughs> climb on them whenever you want. Because we knew when we were going on this topic, I was going to drag out my soapbox, right? Yeah. <laughs> She has a soapbox collection of various heights. This she can do do step from up her soapbox till she's about seven feet tall. Okay, so here's the deal. It's time for our uh, first commercial break of the morning. Do you have them queued up yet? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm going to get my... While we're doing our commercial break, Melissa is going to drag out the soapbox. Be prepared for her to stand on it. When we come back from this commercial break, please go share our Facebook Live. Invite your friends to join us here on Building Bridges with Steve and Melissa on Crossover Radio. Radio with a purpose. We'll be right back. Did you know that about 80% of all bankruptcies are due to medical issues? If you're a business owner, what happens to your business if you can't work for an extended period of time? What about retirement? Do you have enough to live on for the rest of your life? Do you have a succession plan in place for your business? As a small business owner, it's vital that you make sure your business is protected for the future. If you don't have a plan, Five Rings Financial can help get you on the road to financial security and protection. 
Just give us a call today at 405-413-3638 or you can email me directly at jamie, that's J-A-M-I-E, at fiveringsokc.com to schedule a consultation about securing your financial future. Ah, do you hear that? That means the start of a good day in my household. If I don't have that first cup to begin my morning, then I'm guaranteed my day is going to be a struggle. And nobody makes better coffee than Grounds for Compassion Coffee. It's coffee with conviction. So head on over to their website, g4c.coffee. That's g, the number 4, c, dot coffee. Or give them a call at 405-603-1902 to get your own cup A Get Up and Go. And we're back here on Building Bridges with Steve and Melissa. That was Jesus. Jesus joined us. Action figure Jesus waving to the Bridge Builder uh, Marriage Ministry uh, Building Bridges crowd out in Facebook Live land. Jesus Um, comes with us everywhere we go. Yes. And Jesus is one of our favorite... I mean, who doesn't need a Jesus action figure, let's we, be honest. We, uh, he, he reminds us that, you know, even if, you know, 2020 is looking negative, that he's got the victory. So we need to have a long-term perspective right. and, and see the positive because right. it's coming. Right. So before we left to, to go on our first commercial break, we were talking about uh, our, our topic, which is really funny, is building bonds that last. And uh, I had promised that I would pull out my soapbox, and so here we go. Uh, You know, one of the things that I believe the word says is that the power of life and death is in our tongue. That our spoken words are so important. We're created in the image and likeness of God, and so uh, God is a creative being, and he creates by speaking. And nowhere in the Bible have I found, and if I'm wrong, feel free to send me the verse, and I will study it out where it says that God thought and something happened. Every time God changes things, he speaks it into existence, and then he created us with the same exact power. And that's why our words matter so much. Uh, Words are important, and if you want to know where you're at in your life, just listen to what comes out of your mouth, because every single moment of every single day, we are prophesying our future with what we say. And so we can either look at 2020, and and I promise you, if you've spent the entire year saying, 2020 is the worst, this is the most horrible thing, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, life is ridiculous, it's horrible, it's awful, it's a terrible, very bad day. And we should just, you know, crawl in our bed and put the covers over our head until 2021 shows up. I promise you, that is the life that you're living. And you think that you're just reporting what you see, but the Bible says that you're creating with your mouth what you're having. And so when you learn to change your words and change your thought life, your life changes. And and so <clears throat> we can intentionally, on purpose, create an atmosphere or an environment or a lifestyle that we want by using our mouth accordingly, right? And so uh, I, I challenge people everywhere. All the people that I work with, I challenge in this. What is coming out of your mouth and what are you spending your time thinking about? Because whatever you think about comes out your mouth, right? And Joyce Meyer, one of my favorite um, preacher ladies, always says where the mind goes, the man follows. And so when we begin to address our thoughts and our, and our words, we can create what we want. Because the Bible says you have what you say. And uh, so about oh, sometime last, towards the end of last year maybe, Um, I don't remember exactly when it happened, but I began to just get with, you know, kind of um, begin to think, you know what, God, we really are living the dream. Like, I am married to a wonderful man. We have a great marriage. It's not perfect, but it's a great marriage. Our kids are super healthy and in healthy relationships. Our grandkids are amazing. You know, we're doing the call of God on our life in our ministry. Um, Everything, we just are living the dream. Like, we're doing exactly what we were created to do. And and life is really, really good. And so I d- just decided to start declaring over my life that we were living the dream. And I'd say, Steve, don't you think we're living the dream? And Steve would reply, No. Well, we could have more money or we could 
have this or we could have that. And I would find reasons to not agree with her. Right. Because I don't think in his heart he had really, or in, in his mind, he had really thought about just how blessed our life was. And um, and so his first response was, no, I don't think so, because here's like five reasons why I don't think we're living the dream. And eventually, we just, I just kept talking about it, and I kept saying, Steve, think about it this way. Steve, you know, we have all of this goodness in our life, like the creator of the universe loves us. And Jesus can't, gave up everything from heaven, and he came, and he died for us because we are so passionately loved by the Father. Like our marriage is great. And I would rattle off this whole list of things that I had began to ponder and began to just really embrace as the goodness that was happening in our life. And it took me about, I don't know, a couple of weeks probably, maybe longer, I don't remember, to convince Steve to begin to say with me that we were living the dream. And so for the last probably year, uh, we have been declaring over our life every day. We tell people all the time, you know what? We are living the dream. We are living the dream. Our life is so incredibly good. We're living the dream. And go ahead. You want to say something? Well, I we we see couples all the time. We it's, do. It's, it's what, what we, we do. You know, five days a week, you know, 50 weeks a year. And we ask them when they come in, how's your marriage? On a scale of 0 to 10, I mean, it's, it's not the most scientific, but it gives us a baseline to work from. And we say 0 is the only thing that's missing is the signature on the divorce papers, and 10 is living the dream. And most of them look at us like, well, nobody's living the dream. But they're wrong. There are people out there living the dream. We're living the dream. No, and the dream the dream isn't isn't perfection. The dream isn't we never have a fight. The dream isn't that we have all the money on the planet that we want and we can go wherever we want and do whatever we want whenever we want. That's not the dream. The dream is we're 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 happy and filled with joy almost all of the time. We very rarely have conflict. We have healthy relationships with pretty much everyone we know. We do a job we love to do. We are able to do most of the things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do most of the time is what we do. And, and that life is not restricted just to Steve and Melissa. And part of it is the couples that come and see us are generally in the practice of reciting how horrible their marriage is. Most of them will come with a list of what's wrong with the person they married and why their marriage stinks. Some of them will even have that list written down. Exactly. And, and they, are, they are so thoroughly rehearsed with why the person they married to is awful to them and why they're so unhappy that they are getting exactly exactly what they rehearsed to the T what you say is come around to pass and when when we speak about this we are not saying that you are the genie from Aladdin right and you say my marriage is a great snap your fingers and everything is perfect what we are saying is that the words of your mouth influence the world you live in. The world you live in. Mm -hmm. And if you're pouring constantly negative influence into the water, pretty soon the water is going to be gross. Sunday was Father's Day. It was Father's Day. We, we spent. Happy bonus Father's Day. Thanks. We spent most of the day with our middle son mm -hmm. on his boat. It was glorious, by the it way. It was a great day. It was an awesome day. The one who sent me this cup. Yes. And this cup, in case you can't read it, says, My favorite child gave me this cup. Because my children fight over declaring who is my favorite. At least two of them do. At least two of them do. And then one of them will say, the other one will always say, Well, your favorite child. Paul. I'm like, you could be my favorite child, too. And if you guys want to duke it out for who's the favorite I'm down for it. Gifts is her love language, people. <laughs> Gifts is my love language, y'all. She, she hasn't said that since the last time we did the show. <laughs> but 
My, my point is that we were at the lake. We pulled into the marina to get some food and drink. And we were in the dock. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of boats idling there and a bunch of boats tied up. And it's not far from where the boats got gas. And there was stuff in the water that made me not want to go in the water. Didn't stop her granddaughter. Well, no. She was having a glorious time. Right. But what happened is the water had enough fuel added to it that it wasn't mostly water anymore. And I didn't want to get in. And if your marriage, out in the middle of the lake, where it's all pretty much... Diluted out. 99% <laughs> lake and 1% gasoline... I'm all down for that. I'm diving in. I'm splashing around. I'm having a jolly time. But at the dock, where it's 70% lake and 30% gasoline, no bueno for me. And I think it, I think it's a really good point because it was so funny because while our boat was, you know, docked at the marina and we were doing all the things adults do, like buying food and drinks and, and things like that, and actually just kind of hanging out talking yeah. uh, and eating and some things like that, our granddaughter, who was four, was like, can I get in the water and swim? And so um, there was a little safe spot for her to get where the boats weren't coming or going. And, and we were like, sure. And she was having the time of her life. She was living her best life. She was splashing and jumping and getting out and jumping in and getting out and jumping in. She's a fish there's at no, four. You know, there's another little boy from a neighboring boat that was diving off the dock with yeah. her. So she had a play buddy. And and, it, and, and we were busy thinking, ooh, the water's gross. We don't want to get in. And she's thinking... There's water here. I can get in and have a good time. And it's that exact perspective that we're talking about okay. today. 2020 is the same lake. Mm-hmm. And Coral had an attitude that's awesome, more water. And Steve and Melissa had an attitude that said, we don't know what's in this water. Right. And it's the same lake. It's the same year. It's two different attitudes and you have the ability to choose which attitude you want. And the, the positive attitude is going to create more play, more fun, more good times. And the negative attitude is going to create more negative junk. So you get to choose. Am I, living, am I going to live the dream? Am I going to live a life full of joy and love and peace and happiness? Regardless of what the world says, because I'm going to place myself in alignment with the Word of God. Or, I'm going to look at the world and say, this is a terrible, horrible, awful, very bad place. And I'm going to be miserable while I'm circling the sun. And... And so I think it's just about your attitude and how you decide to look at it. And so it's time for a second commercial break. And we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to you about how memories, changing what you say, changes your thoughts, creates memories that builds bond, that increases your ability to live the dream. Alrighty, we will be back here on Building Bridges with Steve and Melissa on Crossover Radio momentarily. We hope you stick with us through the break. We'll see you on the other side. Has your business or organization spent a fortune on printers only to have them break down constantly and need maintenance or other care? Try Cartridge World's Why Buy a Printer program. It's completely customizable to your business's needs, and they bring the printer to you with no upfront costs or maintenance fees. Just purchase your toner and ink through Cartridge World and let them take care of the rest. So stop by or call Cartridge World today and stop fighting with your printer. You can call 405-359-8765 or stop by at 1704 South Broadway in Edmond. At Victory Church, our mission is to help people live, move, and be in the presence of God. Our service times are Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have two worship locations, 1515 North Kelly in Edmond and 4300 North MacArthur in War Acres. For more information, visit our website, victory.church, or call our church office at 405-787-4200. Come to Victory Church, where all are welcome. Hello, hello, hello! Wow, that was really loud in my headset. Sorry, babe. No, I mean, it just is. That just means our mic is is working really good and picking up. Um, I have a voice for radio. You have you have a voice from heaven. <laughs> you 
Okay, for we've been it's married. Loud. We've been married seventeen years, and mm-hmm. I have been telling her for eighteen years how much I love her singing voice, and she's like, "Oh, I'm really not that Helps good." Helps tone deaf. <laughs> I mean, but see, I think her voice is awesome. Um, we were just talking before the break about uh, spending Father's Day on the lake and how our granddaughter and us had different perspectives about the water by the marina. But here's where I want to go with this. is We had a great day on Father's Day. Mm-hmm. And Father's Day is always a little weird for me. It is. Because I contributed no genetic material to any of my three kids. Your family came pre-assembled. And so it's weird. I have a, a, a father-like role. I'm a parent, but I'm not their father. And their father is a good guy. He's, he's a part of their life. I don't ever want to step on his toes, especially on Father's Day. But I I like a little, little bit of props for it. And Melissa... Well, she is their birth mother. Mother's Day has always been sort of a a hit and miss kind of thing. And we were talking before the show about memories and how a bad memory generally has to be really, really bad to be remembered. At At our house. At our house. And a good memory generally has some staying power, and a great memory lasts forever. Right. Uh, we have a, our first ever family vacation coming up with all the kids and all the grandkids. The whole family is coming. Well, 12 of us, one house. Actually, it's 14, babe. 14 of us, <laughs> one house, five days, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But it has a chance to be a great memory that lasts for the rest of everybody's lives. And if you go all the way down to Layla and River, that memory of the trip, first ever family vacation could last 95 years. And what, what a powerful bond great memories can be. Right. And, and we believe that... Strong families have strong bonds, and memories create bonds. So that's why it's so important to do things that create positive memories. You know, it's funny because um, I want to just kind of add a little bit to what you just said there. Like, good memories, good memories create strong bonds. Bad memories chip away at the bonds that you have. And so it's why it's super important to Again, to go back to what we talked about the very first part of the show is whatever you focus on grows. And so when you begin to focus on um, the goodnesses of life, mm-hmm. it was, you know, it's back to the thing of me getting taking a few weeks to get Steve to say, we're living the dream. And and that's just normal. That's a part of our, we made that a normal part of our everyday be conversation like we say it all the time we are living the dream we live the best life god is so good to us and as we as we as that becomes part of our normal conversation what we see is that becomes part of our that is how our life is because it's the perspective which which we view the world through and uh and so when you create memories and when you create goodness you know good thoughts and 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 happy events and stuff like that and when you Go looking for them. You can find them even in the year 2020. Yep. And, in you know, I just noticed that Dwayne, Dwayne Parrish logged on. Good morning, Dwayne. Glad du- you're here. Thanks du- for joining us. Dwayne, I hope you are doing what you want to do when you want to do it as a retired guy. Now, yeah. You're, you're playing with your, your wood saws and, and... Enjoying his life. Crafting out and, and enjoying your, your wonderful wife, Anne, and... <laughs> Thanks for for jumping in. We we want all the families out there to 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 pay attention and to be intentional about creating some memories that create positive bonds in your family because the bonds are what tie us together. The negative impact of 
the world is what tries to pull us apart. Right. I mean, the, we, we acknowledge that a bunch of stuff went crazy in this year. It did. But our bonds, our, our bonds, our positive bonds held us together way stronger than 2020 tried to pull us apart. Right. And, and you, have, you have half a 2020 left. Make it a great one. You can you can spend the next five and a half months building positive bonds that make twenty twenty look like a good year. I mean, it's like man, it it stinks to be Atlanta, but my life is awesome. My life is moving forward. My life has a ton of things I can celebrate. Hey, and you know what? It's here's a here's a here's a perspective adjustment. Uh, Stephen and I were in Atlanta twice. We flew through the Atlanta airport twice um, in the first part of June. And you know what? We were not even hindered in any way by anything going on in the world. In, in spite of the fact that literally while we were there, they were busy burning the city down. But we were not even impacted by it. It didn't, short, it didn't you know, delay our planes, any of that kind of stuff. And so... Um, so I think it's, again, it's all about how you view the world. It's all about your perspective. One of the things, I want to give you a little helper here. One of the things that Stephen and I started doing to help shift our perspective that we, so we would begin to focus on the positive things which helped us create those bonds of good memories was we started uh, years ago, and if you know us, you know that... Um, and you, you, if you've been part of our life for very long, you've probably heard this story. But for any newcomers out there, I feel obligated to share this story. About three years ago, I came home one day from work, and there was a plastic uh, ice cream tub, one of those square plastic, plastic ice cream tubs, that was sitting on our dining room table with a big hole that had been hacked out of the top of it, out of the lid, um, very janky, by the way. Very, very janky. Just imagine bad. Yeah. And and I well, always dogging my craftsmanship. On Steve, this story. Steve had crafted us a little box, and I said, "What is this? And why is it on the table?" <laughs> and he said, "It it's is modern art. It's sculpture. It is our it is our blessing box." And that's what we first started calling it, I think, was a blessing box. And he said, every time something good happens to us, we're going to write it down and we're going to put it in this box. And so we created this box. And every time anything, it didn't matter how big or how small, we had a little, we had a little stack of notepad right beside it. We would write it down and put it in the box. Maybe um, we found... 72 cents on the ground, or 25 cents on the ground, we would put that in the box. Maybe somebody gave us a big blessing financially, that would go in the box. It didn't matter if it was three cents or three million dollars, everything in between went into the box. And and then, periodically, Steve would walk by and shake the box, and he would remind himself that um, that life was good, and that God was working, and God was blessing our life. And at the end of every year, we would go through and we would literally read every single one of those things and look at the stack of, of them were probably like, you know, two inches deep as we recognized God's goodness in our life. And it helped us begin to change the perspective. And it's funny because a lot of those things that went in that box were bond builders because we celebrated over the goodness. I eventually changed it to be our, call it our rock pile box because of the story where the Israelites uh, crossed the Jordan River and God says, go pick up a stone from the center of the river and make a, make a monument to me. Because when you do that, later, when your kids ask you, why is this pile of rocks here? You can say, it's because God, the goodness of God led us out of captivity and into the promised land. And so we need to remind ourselves on a consistent basis that um, God is doing goodness. Now, I like to think if I crossed the Red Sea on dry land, if I had been fed manna and quail in the wilderness, if I had, um, you know, no, there was no one sick or feeble among our group of millions of people, I had crossed the Jordan on dry land and I was in the promised lands of God, that I would never forget the goodness of God. But it took the Israelites about five and a half minutes to forget that God had just rescued them from years and years of slavery. Yeah, and... I just noticed that Jason said, "Let's let's make that a box challenge." Yeah, we might just do that. And and so everybody out there who isn't 
recording their blessings, who isn't reminding themselves of all the reasons to be thankful. And some of you, like Jason, uh-huh. have teenagers. Mm-hmm. And sometimes teenagers can can be a challenge to creating joy in your life. Right. But that's why focus it's on gross. That's why it's even more important to have the right attitude and speak positively and celebrate the good things. Absolutely. And you know, maybe it's hey, I told my 16-year-old to clean his room and he cleaned it without me having to ask him a second time. Write it down, put it in the box. That's reason for celebration. Right. And so anyway, so we created this rock pile box and eventually it's more over the years it's sort of morphed into now we use a little day timer and we put our blessings on a day timer. And uh, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of different ways to change your perspective. And, and you know what? It's funny because every once in a while we'll just flip through the pages and we'll read the goodnesses of God that help us stay recognizing that we're living the dreams. And we'll, um, or we'll go back and we'll say, hey, do you remember when whatever, whatever happened? And that brings us closer together. And so as you begin to celebrate with your spouse, with your children, with your family, the goodness of God, the good things that happen in life, you create these wonderful memories. It's so funny because Steve and I were talking about memories this morning before we came on the show and and he was talking about, you know, I had a, I had one, there was a year that I had a really bad Mother's Day. Um, And I, and our kids were in, not in a good place in their life at the time and it was, it was really unpleasant and, and I just said, you know what, let's just go to Minneapolis and surprise your mother because I'm pretty sure my Mother's Day here in Oklahoma is not going to be very good. And I remember that day, right? But it's not at the forefront of my mind because it's not the focus of what I focus on, right? Mm-hmm. This year I got some fun, super fun gifts from my kids, and I, uh, one, our daughter had us over for dinner, and, and there was a lot of goodness surrounding Mother's Day, and and it's it's a beautiful thing. Like I remember Mother's Day with my mom, and and how I man I was bound and determined I would never miss Mother's Day for my mom, and I would celebrate her because she was wonderful and she was such a blessing in my life. But I also remember fun things like Stephen and I. We uh, and the truth is, uh, Facebook is a really good way to remember things because the time hop comes up every day. And just this morning on my time hop, uh, last year on this day we were in Colorado rafting down a river, and it's a beautiful, fun memory. And we went whitewater rafting for the first time, Mm -hmm. and I was the official boat swimmer and. Uh, which is what they call you if you get tossed out of the boat into the river. And um, and that that was a fun memory that drew us together. We had a great time with his family. And uh, which and it's funny because just a couple of days ago we were talking about when uh, my family, as a young child, we went floating down the Illinois River. And God loved my mom. She didn't like water. She, she would always say she got too wet in the bathtub. I mean, she didn't take a bath. She took a shower because she got too wet in the shower. And she was just not, she didn't, wasn't a good swimmer. And uh, we were floating down, I was telling Steve, we were floating down the Illinois River. And, um, and uh, there were several families that we were all together. And I was probably, I don't know, I couldn't have been more than eight or ten years old. And, and uh, some of the adult men decided it would be fun to turn the canoes of other men. So they got way ahead of us and they flipped it over. And, I mean, they got way ahead of us so they could jump out and surprise people and flip their canoes over because they thought that was fun. They were just playing and having a good time. And I remember they flipped over my mom and dad's canoe. And um, and my mom, I, I literally thought my mom was going to drown in the river. And my dad kept hollering at her, stand up, June, stand up, stand up. And he had to get over and get a hold of her. And, and and she was like literally in less than waist deep water. But I think she would have drowned if my dad hadn't got to her because she panicked so hard. And, our, and, and it was, once she stood up and everything was fine, it became this hilarious story that bonded our family together. And we would always tease mom about drowning in waist deep water. And, and she, you know, she just, that was just who she was, but it was a, it was a fun memory. And that happened when I was probably eight or 10, which has been nearly 50 years ago. And yet it bonded our family, it bonded our friend group. And, and that's what happy memories do. And it creates these bonds that last. And the more positive bonds you have, the stronger your family is. And that's why it's so important to take time to 
build these bonds. And sometimes maybe it's, it's building a tree fort with your kids. Or maybe it's having 20 of your daughter's best friends over for a movie night sleepover and 20 is a build, lot. building a pillow fort in the living room and having them sleep in the living room. And it's something that they remember, you know, into their adulthood. But, I mean, you can, you can build a great memory with a lot of money or with a little money. But what it does take is it does take thought and consideration. And effort. And effort and a, a commitment to time. And it, it often is you putting yourself in second position so you can put the person you are making the memory for. Or with. Or with. Well, I was going to get okay, to that. Okay, sorry. You make the memory for them. Because you want to, to gift them this great memory. And because you're a part of it, it becomes a memory with them. That's awesome. That's super awesome. Hey, it's time for our last commercial break of the show. And um, when we come back, we're going to tie this all up and put a bow on it with the last 15 minutes of the show. So uh, don't go away. Stay here. We're going to uh, pay tribute to some of the people who helped keep Building Bridges with Steve and Melissa on the air here on Crossover Radio, Radio with a Purpose. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered if there was an organization out there that could help you sharpen the most critical areas of your business, your team, and your life? At Sharpstone Group, we specialize in bringing together and optimizing the three key areas of your business, people, processes, and IT. If you're serious about change and results, please make an excuse to go to sharpstonegroup.com or look us up on Facebook at Sharpstone Group. Sharpstone Group is the partner you need both personally and professionally to reach your full potential and achieve maximum performance. The Children's Center Rehabilitation Hospital in Bethany is a faith-based nonprofit organization specializing in the care of children and teenagers with complex special needs. Our medical team at the Children's Center focuses on transitioning children from hospital to home in a loving, caring environment. You can help make miracles happen for these incredible children at the Children's Center by donating today at miraclesheppenhere.org. Hello, 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 and welcome back for the last quarter of the show. See, now everybody knows how beautifully I sing. You know, we have a rule about that. <laughs> Steve doesn't get to sing. We have a rule that we're not supposed to sing on the show. That was you're, you're like a maverick. You're like a... You, you go your own way. You're Isn't there a song about that? You're a renegade. Isn't you, there a song you, about that one yes, too? You're a renegade. You had it made. I don't know the song. Search for it. It's uh, Sticks. Sticks. It's called Renegade. You can look, you can look it up. Stevie Nicks? No, Sticks. S-T-Y-X. Like that's the, different than she's not a part of Sticks? Right, no, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks part of Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> oh, see, that's why I have Steve, because I don't know a, stuff she's like that. Lead, she's a lead vocalist on Fleet, in Fleetwood Mac. Hey, Sticks you... is all guys from Chicago. Fleetwood Mac is a co-ed band from California. And <laughs> it, and England, if you want to include Lindsey Buckingham. But he got, and there you go. He got, kicked out, of, he got go. kicked out of the band. That's the way that works. Okay, so <laughs> we're, we're, our... our our show today is about uh, building bonds that last and using memories to create bonds and strengthen your families. Well, one of the ways you can create a great memory and build a bond between you and your spouse is to go to the Unlocked Marriage Conference. Hey! We tell, are, tell me about the Unlocked Marriage we, Conference, Melissa. Bridge Builder Marriage Ministry is back in the conference business Less as 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 we we uh, celebrate phase three of 
the reopening in the reopening. Oklahoma. We are super excited that we're doing our first marriage conference in a while. So on uh, July the 31st and August the 1st, we are doing the Unlocked Marriage Conference here in the Oklahoma City metro area at Hope City Church in Arcadia, Oklahoma. They are so generously allowing us to use their building and uh, supporting what we do through this marriage conference. And so it is a two-day conference, Friday night and Saturday. And uh, tickets went on sale yesterday, so we're super excited about that. You can get your tickets to the Unlocked Marriage Conference at the link in the show notes here on the Facebook Live. Or you, if you're listening and you can't see what we're doing, you can go to bridgebuildermm.org slash events and get your tickets there. Now, I will tell you that seating is limited in the church, so you want to make sure you get your church tickets early. That's one reason to get them early. The second reason to get them early is because there's an early bird discount, and you can save $10 on your ticket. Uh, one ticket per couple is all you need, but you can save $10 on your ticket if you get them early and use the oh. use the promotional code early bird, one word, and uh, you can get your tickets and, for a discount. And wouldn't it be better if you got a 100% discount on your tickets? Because gifts is my love language, y'all. So, earlier in the show, we talked about our blessing box slash rock pile. And uh, regular listener and friend of the show and friend of ours, Jason Murray, said we should make that a challenge. Well, Jason... We're going to do it! Just to show that we are receptive and we listen to our audience, we are going to ask everybody out there to make a blessing box slash rock pile and take a picture of it and send it to us, uh, to the Bridge Builder Facebook page. Uh, yeah, you can put it on our Bridge Builder Facebook page. Post up your picture of your blessing box. We'll be it'll be entered into the drawing for a set of free one one free ticket. One couple's ticket to the uh, Unlocked Marriage Conference happening on July the 31st and August the 1st at Arcade, at Hope City Church in Arcadia. So, you make your blessing box, doll it up as much as you want. Maybe you let the whole family Be contribute part of it. Mm-hmm. And, and make it a memory right. as you build a place to celebrate God's goodness, to look for the positive, to... to have this centerpiece where you celebrate God's goodness in your life, and then you use that to get even more goodness and get free tickets to an event that's going to create memories and build bonds. Do you see how all of these things feed into one another and and make a, a healthier, stronger whole? That's what we're about here. That's why we do this show, is so that you can have a healthier, stronger marriage and family. And so we put all these pieces together. Um, I haven't hit her in the face yet. I did this once when we were teaching. I was going, and then I just whap. For those of you who are just listening on the radio, Steve is, uh, he talks with his hands. I'm He's very animated, animated with my hands while I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this, this. We've been married long enough that I've learned to um, Bob, kind of Bob and Bob and Weave, Bob and, 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 and Dodge. And, uh, and so he hasn't hit, he was very I, animated when he was talking about winding all of this into yeah. a pretty little package. Bless, so, out there, build your blessing box. Snap a picture of it. Build it together. Send it to Bridge Builder, uh, Bridge Builder MM. Dot org. Dot org. Slash events. Slash events. There's a link or, on the Facebook live feed here on the Crossover Radio Facebook page. But your picture of your blessing box. Has to go to the Bridge Builder Marriage Ministry Facebook page. Okay. And then you can win tickets. And, yes. And go to a great marriage conference at a great church in Arcadia. You can hit pops on the way out. You can take pictures with the round barn. We're going to feed you, you lunch can, on Saturday. You Saturdays. can go to the lake when we're done. It'll be a win-win for everybody. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. It'll be terrific. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, three keys to making a successful marriage. And so uh, Jason, is funny, he said, we bought our tickets last night. They did. They were all over it. And they, he said, if we win the tickets, they'll give them to some of their friends. And right. so <clears throat> he's going to pay it forward if he wins. And I think that that is 
super awesome of him. And so, hey, you guys, we want to thank you for hanging out with us today here on Crossover Radio. We hope that you're going to spend the last half of 2020 making something beautiful of it, that you're going to change your perspective and decide that you're going to live the dream regardless of what the world has going on and uh, that you're going to do great things and make this the last half of the year great. You know what? You can be an influence to the people in your lives as you choose to get up every day and say, today I'm living the dream. Today I believe good things are going to happen to me. Today I choose to think thoughts of goodness. You know, I'm going to think thoughts of goodness. I'm going to speak positively. I'm going to be a positive influence to those people around me. Because there's plenty of folks who are are drinking the this is this is the worst thing in history Kool Aid, and you know it's it's not the bubonic plague, it's not the Holocaust, you know there are there are worse things, and what we need to do is we need to be a force for good, and a force for positivity in the world and push back against against the craziness that's out there. And it, it starts with you. It starts in your home. And then you push your influence out to your job and your church and your friends and your family. And, and hopefully it catches fire and, and spreads in a positive direction going out from you. Yes. So we hope today's been um, a good show for you. We hope that you would do us a favor if you're watching on Facebook Live and you would share it. Maybe you're listening on the Crossover Radio app that you have downloaded from your App Store, uh, Google Play, App Store, wherever you get your apps. You can download the Crossover Radio app and take us with you wherever you go and listen to Crossover Radio anytime you want to, uh, no matter where you're at and you're not tied to your computer. But if you are watching us on Facebook, we hope that you'll share the Facebook Live with your friends, invite them to come and join us, and maybe if you're listening on the radio, you'll tell people to download the app and listen to Crossover Radio wherever you go. You know, we have a lot of good shows. Uh, we have the 11 at 11, the top 11 Christian um, contemporary Christian uh, songs on Saturday morning at 11 with DK and Joy. And so there's, you know, there's there's a lot of good shows happening. There's, a lot of good music happening on Crossover Radio. And, you know, sometimes maybe what you need is some positive energy tunage and, and you can take the politics of the day and tune that out. Right, because you can only listen to news for so long before you get crazy. So... Thanks for hanging out with us today here on Building Bridges with Steve and Melissa. We look forward to seeing you back next week. And uh, do we have we have we're gonna we're gonna be here next week, right? Uh, you know what? Let's look at that and find out because I think we are. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be here next. We'll week. We'll be here next week, and then we'll we'll record a special show for. The week we're on family vacation. The week we're on family vacation. So you'll get a new show that you haven't heard. It'll just be secret, and it won't be live live, but it'll be recorded live here in the Palatial Bridge Builder Studios. But we've got to roll because we've got another show coming up. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye.